A lot of clients will fall into what we call non-voluntary. They face non-legal pressure uh, to participate in, um, in some kind of treatment services. And this is go from one end. It could be um, a spouse or a partner who's being nudged into couples therapy and doesn't really want to be there, but it's doing to, to be compliant. Um, and uh, it can go from uh, adolescents and schools who have to participate in some sort of uh, required treatment. Um, it could be a, an emerging adult. And what I learned is that when coercion enters the therapeutic relationship, uh, it infects the entire relationship. Hmm. And that we have to take into account what the impact of that, that coercion or compulsion to participate does. Um, so often it means that people are approaching treatment with a degree of anger, um, or oh, you, might call, you might call it resistance. Um, you know, we, the language I will use and I'll use in the workshop is what we call reactance. Uh, and um, in my doctoral research, I came across a theory of psychological reactance, which is a theory of the normative responses to perceived impingements on our freedom or autonomy. Um, so, you know, when we're forced to do something we don't really want to do and that we could potentially exercise choice, um, there are lots of attitudes and behaviors that can emerge to give us a sense of autonomy. One of the things we're going to do is um, roll reverse with your attitude. Let me do it with you, Frank. Can I do it? Okay. okay. Sure. So, so, Frank, I want you to do this so dramatically. Okay. Okay. I want you to think of a kid you work with um, who, um, you know, the, the warm up in the group, we would have warmed the group up already. Mm -hmm. Warm up is a big important piece of this. When you only have an hour or an hour and 15 minutes to run a group, you learn to warm them up quickly. Yeah. Um, and I have a chair and I invite you to come sit in the chair. Tell before we even start, tell me your name. It's not Frank. My attitude? No, the person who you are. Joe. Joe. So, Joe, how old are you? I'm 16. Okay. Why are you here in the hospital? Uh, I was self-harming. Self-harming. You were hurting yourself. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, they, don't now let me say, they don't let me say that in the hospital. Yeah, well, this is my group, so All right. you can say it here. You were okay. hurting yourself, right? Yep. Okay. Now, now in these next chair, and I would have you move. So turn, turn, get up and sit back down, Joe, and sit back down as your attitude. Good. Do that even more. Yeah. So now let's hear the fuck you. Go ahead. Fuck you, Rebecca. Yeah. Go I ahead. don't want to be here. Absolutely. You, you can't make me talk. Right. And people have made you. Lots of grown-ups telling you you have to do this, that Joe has to do this, and you're here saying fuck you. So I have a question to ask you. First of all, I want to assure you that I'm not trying to get rid of you. You have served a really important purpose in Joe's life. You know what that is? How I think do you, so. What do you do for him? Because you do important stuff. I, I stand up for him. Yeah. Good. What else do you do? Uh, I get people off his back. Yeah. You make you push them away, don't you? Yeah. If I, I, I you know, I don't want them to. To get in my business, I'll just say, you know, it's all good. Yeah. I like to say fine. I'm fine. Fine, yeah. So I have a so, question to ask you. Attitude. How old was Joe when you came into his life? Uh, probably like um, the beginning of middle school, seventh grade, maybe. Seventh grade, yeah. And you were really important back then i mean you're important now too but at that point it was really really urgent that he had you how did, yeah, how did people you people were pushing him around were they bullying him yeah they were pushing bullying him yeah oh my gosh so thank god we have you okay. that's what i say good okay i want you to reverse roles with joe come into joe's chair so joe i want to start by saying thank god you have this attitude hmm. Now, I have a no, no one's ever thanked me before. My, my parents, their favorite line is lose the attitude. I don't want you to lose the attitude. Thank I you. think it serves a really important purpose, but I have a question to ask you. Yeah. Have you ever found that your attitude comes out at the wrong time with the wrong person? All the time. Okay, good. So I'm going to stop now because what I would do now is ask, and this is a little bit where I can integrate this with dialectical behavioral therapy. Mm. So take a look at what's a situation where you wish 
and this is the way I would say it, that you can keep your attitude in your back pocket, that you have control over when it comes out rather than it controlling you. It is so okay. disarming. Like, stop a when, second. When I, now the role of Joe. Okay. And become so, frank again. Okay. No, you don't want to continue as a teenage kid? I know. Okay. I like this. That was frank. Go ahead. No, I, I mean, when I do this, it is so disarming. So we're going to be teaching. Uh, that's just one of many things that we yeah. will be teaching during this all-day workshop. And it'll be yeah. fun because people get to show us their bad attitudes. Yeah. We're going to be working sociodramatically, not psychodramatically. It's not going to be a personal growth workshop, but we hope that people will walk away with things that they can use with their um, their own groups. Um, it is going to be focused on group work, not individual mm -hmm. work so much. Yeah. Um, it's one of the areas that both Frank and I have a lot of expertise in. Um, I, I think I think we probably, between the two of us, have over, I don't know, how many years have you been working in doing groups? <laughs> uh almost 35. so and um, 75 years worth of group 75 years worth of group experience working with particularly working with teenagers in group yeah. work. so we we've, we've seen it all we've also seen mm -hmm. the changes and and i will i just want to say this to to everybody that um i left the hospital that i worked in 12 years ago and i know things have changed mm -hmm. social media the internet has changed things but I think this, the core issues that all human beings have about wanting to be accepted and wanting connection has not mm -hmm. changed. Um, right. And psych something better than psychodrama for both of us.